Welcome back to News 8 Midday, and it is that time of year. You might be shopping for kids, your kids, and, and you want a toy that's, you know, not just fun, but something with learning involved. And robots often a popular choice, but taking you out of that screen time can often be difficult when you're looking for these kinds of things. And so joining us today, we've got Samantha Culpepper, the assistant principal of Chapel Hill Preparatory, and she's going to walk us through why this robot is so unique. I, I'm kind of in awe looking at it. I mean, it kind of takes you back to, I don't know, rudimentary learning it looks like, but it is very advanced. Yes. So, actually, at my campus, um, I do an after-school program called Coding for Kids, mm -hmm. and I have several different robots. Um, Kibo is actually the robot that I'm introducing last wow. to the children because of all the different functions and abilities that it has. And so how Kibo works is you choose a program and you put them in sequential order for what you want the robot to do, whether it be sing ah. or shake or move. Mm -hmm. So and those are those building blocks here? Those are the blocks right there. So that's a code that I've put together. And then all you do is you scan the robot um, on the barcodes. The kids love this part because you can hear the beep when it scans. Who doesn't love that? Yes. yes. So I'm scanning the code right now. So begin, shake, blue light on forward, sing, spin, and the end. And the end. And so this so is going to do all of that. That's exactly right. So now I'm going to push the green triangle and it's going to do the same sequence that we just programmed. Oh my goodness, wow. Okay, so there's the blue light on. Next up is Here forward. <laughs> and it's singing for us right there, too. So age group, um, w w how old are the kids that use Kibo? So Kibo is designed for s children that are ages four to seven. Mm -hmm. However, I would argue that children of any age would have a lot of fun with this. I myself enjoy bringing the robot home and playing with it and learning different things that the robot can do. Just yesterday, I introduced the robot to a couple of mentors who are in my club. Uh -huh. They're actually fifth graders. Uh -huh. And they were very intrigued by Kibo, kept programming and trying new things and seeing what kind of problems they could solve. And so, like, like I said, it's targeted for four to seven year olds, but it really could hit any age group. Well, I love it because you have the building blocks there, and everybody knows kind of how to play with those. They kind of link right. up together, but then you take it to a whole nother level with Kibo, and I love it because there is no screen time involved, and a lot of parents are trying to get their kids off those video games, yes. staring at that blue light. Yes. Why is it so important as an educator to kind of get kids away, for anybody who might not know, away from those screens? So it's widely recognized that young children learn best by playing, creating, and moving with actual concrete mm -hmm. objects. And so so what's really cool and what's important to know about Kibo is not only does it tap into the students who are really technology focused, but also has a whole creative aspect where the robot actually comes with a couple of different art platforms that you can really get creative with. So I can add some different things to Kibo and what ends up happening is he can spin and move. That tactile learning. I yes, like that. definitely. Wow. And, and the different textures. I mean, it looks so cool and very organic, if you can even call this yeah, kind of definitely. technology. That I love that. Well, thank you so much, Samantha, for joining of course. us. Once again, that's Samantha Culpepper from Chapel Hill Preparatory. That's thank right. you again. Thank you. All right, coming up on Midday, we've got